thank you so much for letting me be a part of this to Asia Society. I'm absolutely, I can't express how delighted I am to be here tonight. First of all, huge audience. I think this is uh, the most people we had at a big picture event since I've been a part of it. So thank you all for coming and making the time. It promises to be a very insightful and also let me share this with you entertaining evening because I had the great pleasure to already talk to these two ladies and it is just <laughs> it was hard for us to stop in advance <laughs> we are going to touch on a lot of topics but before we do so I would like to introduce both of them first of all Setsuko-san and Kazu-san um, thank you for being here with me tonight you made a long travel Setsuko yes. this morning <laughs> yeah you came from Paris where you where you spent your time Sesk is, is a great artist, she's a painter, ceramicist, her work, your recent show was actually in Gestalt, so not very far away from us in the summer of, yes, of this during year. Summer. Yeah, beautiful, the work is also included in many amazing collections around the world and I should absolutely not fail to mention that in 2005 you were designated UNESCO's Artist for Peace. Yes. Congratulations, that's a really great honor. Um, your work is so prolific and, and really spans so many beautiful subject matter. And one of the things that is very remarkable about you, about you and why we are also talking tonight is that you are dedicated and very intimately in touch with wearing a kimono. You yes. do so at all times and always. We have one example, but we will get to later. <laughs> you were born in Tokyo, as you were you, Kazo, actually. Um, and you shared your life with the artist Balthus. That yes, is also yes. a, a very important part of that. We will touch on all of that a little bit more later. Thank you so yes. much for being here today. It's such an honor to have you. And you're joined on stage by Kazu, who is um, Kazu Hugler, who lives here in Zurich and is a designer and makes the most amazing fashion. I'm wearing a piece of hers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that she was absolutely generous enough to let me let me borrow for tonight. And I have to say, I feel I, I feel carried and upright, and I'm feeling I'm wearing a, a little bit of nothing. It's so light and beautiful. Thank if you, you. haven't had the chance yet to go to her showroom, please do so. Uh, you studied art history, actually, of um, yes. Japanese art history, and then you decided to pursue a career in integrating a lot of what I think you learned and picked up in your studies and sort of the appreciation of, amongst other things, the kimono into your work today. We're going to dive very deep into that because, for example, the piece that I'm wearing today is actually, um, it used to be a kimono a historic one, and this is how it's getting a beautiful second life. Um, it's going to be a really wonderful conversation, and we're going to dive into topics such as the cultural relevance of the kimono today, of course, its history, its tradition, also some more dicey subjects that we just <laughs> discovered that we have a lot to chat about. <laughs> we'll go more to that later. But I want to start with both of you because I think um, it is so interesting. When we chatted yesterday, you were still in your studio. Mm -hmm. so, um, I really want to know your personal origin story with the kimono how you sort of got to know it, when it first entered your life, or maybe a very early memory of it, or something that kind of has this origin moment for you with this extraordinary piece of clothing. Mm -hmm. Would you start with that? Yes, uh, when I was small, kimono, it's almost uh, my grandparents wearing all the time, and uh, my mother as well, and myself, Mm, I remember very, very well a uh, certain kimono I, I had. And which was very interesting is, even you go to the market, the, the person who sells the, uh, the things, they are in kimono. So I should say, um, maybe I can be an oldest person uh, of, of tonight. But it was kimono was a daily life wear. Uh, so suddenly, maybe a certain moment, there was a changement. But kimono was something my childhood uh, souvenir uh, always there. And when I was small, the certain one I loved so much. And after that, mm. I couldn't put, but it became uh, my 
uh, stone cover, bed cover uh, thing. And after that, it becomes a zabuton, the cushion. And it becomes smaller and smaller, but it's, uh, it's very, I had uh, affection to the things and the clothes. Uh, myself, I always love the clothes and even my um, uh, still life, I put lots of clothes, Indian clothes, Japanese clothes, uh, and my childhood uh, souvenir, almost everybody put on kimono. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was surrounded by the person, but uh, it it's changed when I began to went to school, mm -hmm. uh, elementary school and high school, totally uh, Japan changed. Mm -hmm. And you met, I, I want to touch on that because you mentioned it yesterday and I thought it was a beautiful sentiment when you and Baltus first met. Oh, yes. So, after that I met Baltus uh, and I'm married and he said, you are Japanese and why you don't put kimono? It's such a most beautiful artisanal work. Mm. Every, every thing, so the kimono, the belt, uh, the cord, all details. And he, he was very moved the way how it's uh, sold. Mm -hmm. um, it's invisible invisi part, even you cannot see the trace of the um, feel. Mm -hmm. of, the, of the of the uh, stitches, yeah. You see, uh, uh, just like that, you don't see. Mm -hmm. Because for us, invis invisible part, invisible part is all very important as same things as a visual part. Mm -hmm. It's like tea ceremony, you see, the washing, the preparation is also very important as you put tea mm -hmm. and drink. Mm -hmm. That means um, how you do the things is important. Mm -hmm. To do the things with your heart, then it becomes precious things. Mm -hmm. And that, that is uh, one of the uh, kimono also mm -hmm. to, to show that our traditional way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Such an important and beautiful sentiment. Thank you for, for sharing that. Kazuo, and for you, what was your what was your sort of origin story with the fascination? Um, well, I was, um, I was born in Tokyo to a mm -hmm. Japanese mother and a Swiss father, and uh, was, uh, grew up in both countries. Um, I was wearing kimono when I was a child in Tokyo. We had a lot of uh, religious festivals. Mm -hmm. I loved wearing kimonos as a child because they were always someone who did put a kimono on, my mother yes. <laughs> or my grandmother, and it was such a wonderful feeling of being dressed mm -hmm. by someone. Um, but actually where everything really started was when I heritaged all the kimonos from my grandmother from Japan. Mm -hmm. I really liked her and I did admire her as a person because she was wearing kimono and both uh, Western clothing perfectly with a strong attitude and a special elegance with a, with a very natural self-assuredness. Um, self, uh, so um, I learned how to wear a kimono when I studied art history in Tokyo, and it helped me a lot to understand the essence of kimono or the origin of kimono. Mm -hmm. And this study gave me the, the basic or a kind of a security to use this culture to something new, to transform it. Mm -hmm. and the main thing maybe as a fashion designer is the feeling what you get when you wear a garment or wear clothing. This is so particular when I wear a kimono. Mm. Um, it gives so much impact. That was actually mm. my thesis in mm. Tokyo, the impact of the kimono to the wearer. So it's still my goal to create garments which gives a kind of a spiritual um, and a strength. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, even from wearing a later interpretation of one, it, it, it's so beautiful how you're like held. And mm. we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Maybe, uh, g would it be useful to talk about the tradition a little bit? To, yes. to talk about the real origins and how the kimono mm -hmm. developed? Because the Japanese culture, the mother of our culture is from China. Uh, and especially time period uh, dress came to Japan uh, uh, the, for the first time around 7th century. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, it's like a little bit like time period uh, costume, and it's really become a kimono as you see today is from 10th century, the Heian period. And since then, the cut never changed. So what is very particular is the form uh, of kimono didn't change for centuries and centuries. So the reason why the how to weave, there is a lot of incredible uh, different way how to weave. And also the drawings. Mm, drawings, I don't, I think that Japan has a most rich, different uh, drawings. Everything becomes drawing. The roof of the house, the children's toy, and of course flowers, and um, also particularly is we have to really be uh, very uh, sensible to the season. We, the drawing of kimono, uh, if you have um, some flower, camellia, I put in winter and not in another season. Mm -hmm. That means we live with nature. And we should be always sensible the moment how the, world, uh, the, the outside is. And that uh, comes from um, Shinto spirits, that in Shinto, every, everything has a soul. Mm -hmm. So it means um, that the reason why there is a lot of ceremony uh, and even 8th of um, February there is a cult uh, for um, needles. Needles, uh, broken needle uh, we put together and it's done in the shrine, and we thank them because they are broken for us. <laughs> <laughs> that Beautiful. is very, very lovely, uh, nice feeling. Even to the things broken, we thank, thank yeah. them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a part of, uh, uh, yes, the typical Japanese sentiment to the things. It's, uh, that's uh, an incredible notion, right? That you thank the broken needles for their work. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. Yes. Have you been part of such a ceremony ever, Kazu? No, broken needle uh, ceremony <laughs> never. <laughs> Maybe you should introduce that to your studio a little bit. <laughs> yes, to thank them too, yes. Uh, I think still now we do 8th of February. Mm, 8th of February. Yes, we, we mm. should go together. Yes, <laughs> let's go. Which shrine is it or is it? No, the shrine... Uh, Almost all shrine mm -hmm. does, yes. Wonderful. Yes, my mother's period, everybody know yeah. how to sew. Mm -hmm. And professional took um, nine years to, to really to sew well. Mm -hmm. That is professional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and all the woman knows uh, my mother's period, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I not wanted... my period. 
I want to know a little bit more about what's appropriate to wear when, but Kazu, maybe very qu quickly to you, because th this carries so much over from your appreciation for your grandmother's mm -hmm. uh, pieces Humanos, that you inherited, yeah. and uh, that there's a certain spirit in them, mm -hmm. what you just yes, mentioned. Yes, yes, but this is yes. It's uh, usually in, in Japan, um, kimonos are heritage, or like passed down, from woman to woman in the family or from man to man. Mm -hmm. And I learned this because it's very um, personal. Um, when something was worn by a person, yeah. or if something was made with so much time and love and passion, um, the things become, start to have a kind of a soul. And this soul must be appreciated, also respected, and one shouldn't wear kimonos from other families because it's a very, very intimate thing. Ah, okay. And I loved wearing kimonos from my grandmother because it's, it's a very personal relationship. But for the pieces which I make, like mm -hmm. those are old, they were old kimonos, mm -hmm. I don't take apart kimono from my grandmother because I have to wear them and I want <laughs> as to... It is. Yes, as it is. <laughs> um, but I'm uh, using old kimonos and uh, I'm very aware of that I have to handle it with a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll get into your pieces in just a second. I would love to also show what we're talking about. But maybe, can I ask you before we do so, how is your particular viewpoint on how the tradition is carried on at the moment, today? How integrated is wearing a kimono from just your experience and viewpoint today? Uh, today, uh, uh, yes, uh, as I wear almost everyday life, yes. which was uh, Balju's suggestion. Um, so I used to wear, it becomes quite normal, mm. but which is very um, curious what I felt today, everybody should go to the place how to put kimono. Mm -hmm. Kimono is something to wear. In my period, it's uh, today I, I, I wear very carefully, uh, but in general, if I am alone or I just do the things to go to studio for work, I wear uh, very quickly and it was quite, uh, nobody really, it should be straight. Yeah. My, my grandmother was here because you are taking the things from, upper part, the kimono is not like today that is very special things. Mm -hmm. We can wear how, how we like to wear mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. And when I was uh, waiting the baby, the, you, you don't need to have a special kimono because it's done for the body. Mm -hmm. And for the newly born baby, <laughs> You, you, you just open <laughs> and you give the milk, mm -hmm. uh, which is today kimono becomes so something too special mm -hmm. that I regret. Mm -hmm. And somebody mm -hmm. said that, no, because I don't know how to put. Uh, this is, of course, for the ceremony, the tea ceremony or wedding, I understand one should be very tight and should, it should be beautifully done. But if you, that is the things I feel today. The kimono becomes something to put in the museum vitrine, yeah. no? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I like that lots of Japanese try to put much more easily mm -hmm. and uh, um, without thinking too much the line and because it's something alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, w what you're wearing today in terms of how formal this would be on a scale of easygoing to really formal, where would this live? Uh, th this is because uh, I speak ab about Super kimono, formal. And so I do. <laughs> Lots of effort, <laughs> <laughs> the combination and everything, but it's for you. Mm -hmm. um, but if I am alone and I'm in a studio, mm -hmm. it's, you see, because I have to work the big tree in ceramic, uh, no, I think I'm not tightly like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. 
it's something in like almost in blue jean and t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you wore that? Probably never. <laughs> well, we're very happy that you that that you came in. What just looks absolutely stunning, and it was also chosen with a particular um, interest in mind that you come to the Zurich Lake. Do you want to share that real quick? <laughs> that you wore blue for the for the lake here. I, yes, it's really yes. I, I think I, I have such beautiful image of uh, lack of Zurich. So the first things I thought that oh, I will put blue. Mm. Yes. Yes. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, and if the season, the flowers, that is a great joy, the mm -hmm. most inter interesting part. And if rainy day, I have a kimono with umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Kazuo, yeah. what are you wearing today? Um, well, actually, that's what I learned in Japan by uh, learning kitsuke. Uh, the, the art of, or ritual of wearing, putting on a kimono, that you always first think about the environment. Yeah. If you go to a place, mm. you just don't think like, oh, I feel like yellow, I wear a yellow kimono, but you consider the season, uh, people whom you are met, you, you're meet, going to meet, the position of your ex existence, mm -hmm. is it okay to be loud or should you just become a bit more um, uh, the background? And I think this aesthetic is very particular that it's always a total image. You know, you don't, if you dress up yourself, you don't see only yourself, but you always think about putting you in a scenery mm. and it must be a harmonic, total aesthetic. Mm. And this is something which I really appreciate, uh, having learned it. For example, today when I was wearing it, I, I thought maybe I'm a bit too colorful because I don't want to be too much in the center with this strong pink, but I knew that I'm going to need this color to be a bit more cheerful. And uh, for trousers, this was a very old um, kimono, a yagasuri, mm -hmm. um, uh, from Mason period, Mason kimono. And uh, yagasuri is an arrow and it's actually a lock bringing uh, pattern because it's um, like taking off the, the evil, mm -hmm. but also arrows fly directly to the point. So I, my brain is not so clear a few days. <laughs> so I thought it's good to have kind of arrow to have a support of being more focused. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Can I ask you really quickly, because you, you mentioned that you always consider the environment when you put a kimono, maybe to both of you, what's a faux pas? What's a really, you know, what, what should you not do when you consider how to wear it? Or what kimono should you never wear outside or inside or to a fest? So something? So we are all warned? Uh, I don't much care uh, in Europe. I only care <laughs> <laughs> if Wonderful I am to in hear. Japan. <laughs> because um, Japan, the, uh, the um, size of the sleeve when one is not married, very long. Ah. And with age, becomes shorter and shorter. <laughs> uh, but I wear like young wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoyed. Mm. Um, but um, that, that sort of things. But I think it's a little bit absurd too much. One is um, one should be careful mm -hmm. uh, because normally a married woman shouldn't be uh, too much colorful, the light colors, mm -hmm. uh, 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 which is very nice that we had a, a much more European dress influence. Mm -hmm. So we can now a much more colorful mm -hmm. and I am um, I married and a uh, widow. Uh, I should be very so uh, the color soutenu uh, soble. Mm. So very so muted colors. Probably. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, should be mm -hmm. if I am in Japan. Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and Kazu, for you, anything that you're like that does not 
I, you can't do that. Don't. Ah, oh, it's a big theme, isn't it? What, yeah, well, we're not going to. Don't no. don't dabble into that yet. Yes. That's um, <laughs> but actually, I have a big respect because I learned how to yeah. properly wear it, mm -hmm. and it has a meaning. You know, like each detail is not just like because of you know being able to put the finger on someone and saying like you didn't do it. You don't do it like that. It's Everything has a meaning of which each knot, mm -hmm. and this is so interesting. Mm -hmm. That's why it survived. Mm -hmm. And after knowing the details and the meaning and the philosophy, it's hard for me to change it. Mm -hmm. When I wear a kimono, I want to wear it properly mm -hmm. um, because I just love it the proper way I learned. And in my work, it's completely different because I'm having a very different approach. And that's what I kind of want to get into, to be honest, because the way that Wimop was in the wonderful exhibition that is happening yes. at the Riedbeck mm. at the moment, which is really, I mean, Nico already recommended it. It's really worth seeing if you and haven't had a chance. I, I add, it's a sort of a renaissance mm -hmm. of kimono because uh, you make alive mm -hmm. Uh, to something new, so Thank I think. <laughs> so I, I think it's a renaissance mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes, I agree. Should we um, take a look at your work and you can maybe yes, explain sure, yeah. how you work? I know that there's a slideshow. Serena, would you be able to show us, please? Mm -hmm. Um, that's the original shape of a kimono. Mm -hmm. um, usually you don't hang it on, on the wall, but we just wanted to show how it's constructed. It's uh, always this T-shape and a very interesting construction because you have just like four panels, mm -hmm. the left and the right one, without any seam here. So you can gain back two panels. Mm -hmm. I can maybe show this one. This is like a tan. It's mm -hmm. a typical uh, roll without being um, colored or, uh, um, and you have just like two of them on this side and the shorter one for the sleeve. So mm -hmm. you can gain back four panels. For this jumpsuit, I actually didn't do a lot. Uh, it's just like these two panels stitched in the mid center together and even without using the sleeves. The, the colorfulness is just wonderful, right? It's just fantastic how these extraordinary yeah. patterns we live. I, I think saw that this dish. is also a wonderful kimono from uh, a Mason, which I like because it's, uh, it has the same uh, spirit like today, mm -hmm. this challenging spirit, boldness. And what I find interest, in, important when you use a culture for your design is to trying to understand what the person who made it had in mind not only thinking, oh, it's cool, long sleeve, let's do a long sleeve mm -hmm. for this season. No, there was, a, there was a meaning. And the meaning was actually that they wanted to use the panel as it is and not cutting too much inside mm -hmm. to make it reusable mm -hmm. because you respect the time and work which is behind. It's a little bit what you mentioned, that it became a blanket and then it became a pillow. It, yes, it, because yeah. it's a cut, it's very straight. Yeah. It's, there is no mm, round cut. Uh, no so curves. You no can, curves. You, uh, always you can get uh, this whole size of the clothes. The reason mm -hmm. why that as you, I put my grandmother's kimono, my mother's, my aunt, uh, it's very uh, strong. And it's modern. It's a very modern <laughs> garment, isn't yes, it? Because yes. it's like say, sizeless and it's genderless. Yes. And it's reusable, very environment conscious. And that's why it survived. The genderlessness I found very, very interesting when we first talked about this. The fact that the, that the size really mm. is extremely adaptable. As you say, it's a living thing. It works mm. with your body too. And that it really is the basic shape is exactly the same for men and women. How do they differ? Actually, traditionally? You, you have the same way to close. Yes, <coughs> like that. So uh, mm -hmm. in, in Europe, it, this is for men. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in Japan, men and women, it's at the same way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I'm wearing a man's one. You are wearing a tsumugi. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a um, very nice, um, solid fabric for men. Mm -hmm. um, it's a traditional way of weaving. Yeah. 
And it's maybe the important thing is also to say that the person who is wearing it mm. is making the shape. Yes. This kimono, isn't yes. it? Yes. It's, if it's not worn by a person, it's, it's just a flat piece of... Yeah, of that's fascinating. Uh, that, that means you, you don't enter in it. It's a kimono envelope you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, how can I say, today there is um, something quite large, uh, is for everybody, no? It's very a la mode mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And kimono is almost to, for every size. Mm -hmm. My my grandmother was very um, a lot of volume mm -hmm. everywhere. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and I I had my grandmother's uh, uh, kimono, but I have to re um, sew mm. to make it uh, more tight. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And but always the same same origin original size of the cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what are we looking at there? This was an obi, uh, like the wonderful obi. Um, you are wearing a beautiful obi setsuko san. It's a uh, very old one, isn't <laughs> it? I was admiring it all the time. <laughs> this is very, very old. <laughs> so um, I used also the entire obi, even the uh, non-embroidered part, because usually the, you can't embroider the entire obi, it's too expensive. So the part you won't see, finally it's blank. Oh, this is a kurodome. You know, in Japan, there is kimono remake existing. It's mm -hmm. called kimono remake. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not so easy. Um, I have a lot of Japanese clients coming to me and I can make, transform it to a new garment. Yeah. Um, I don't know what is, do you like kimono remake in Japan? Do, have you seen a uh, Japanese style of making new clothes of? No. 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 <laughs> um, it looks quite, you know, I think they're trying to do something like uh, they're trying to make a Western garment mm -hmm. of, made by kimono. Mm. But I think you really need to unst unstitch it and have a very new, fresh approach. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. And it, sometimes I have to stop because I say like, no, this is not the right aesthetic. Mm -hmm. mm. And I always go back to Japan and show it to my friends, my critical friends. And uh, if someone says, because it's not good, then I don't do it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I sometimes don't see it anymore from here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you wouldn't do is, for example, do a classic blazer cut in the fabric of a kimono, for example. It's difficult to say what yeah. it is. But it just, it, it's, it's a style, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's also this feeling of being wrapped, the clothes that I've seen of yours, they're very... They, they, what you were mentioning, that they envelop you. Mm. They all have that quality, right? They, have, they all have that like very soft, making a shape uh, quality that I mm. think yes. you mentioned mm -hmm. on this purpose. Uh, may I ask you, Sesku, when, when was the last time you didn't wear one? Wait, wait. You, when yes. is the last time that you didn't wear a kimono? Uh, um, <laughs> when, I was in Paris. And to travel, kimono, it's, it's flat. Yes. So I can put a lot. And when I am in trip, so I, before, when I was in um, uh, Switzerland, uh, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. Yes, yes. Three weeks ago, because in, in Grand Chalet, um, we have a uh, lots of animals. Yes. Animals jumping. <laughs> <laughs> what kind jump of animals you? do you have? Jumping ones. Are. You have a wolf. W wolf dog. You have a wolf dog. Wolf dog. Wow, there. Yes. Yeah, well. Uh, so, that jumps on you. Uh, if the human being, I can do that. The wolf dog, baby, it's much more difficult. So I was in... Um, I was not in kimono. <laughs> that seems like a wise idea with a wolf dog baby around. <laughs> and when was the last time you wore a full kimono, Kazu? It was um, in spring in Japan. Nice. 
Um, actually, it was for a shoot for this uh, short film, which uh, we made for um, the yes, exhibition. Yes. Um, it's called Unstitch Hodoku. It's a very personal film mm -hmm. about my connection to kimono. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it really felt good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I believe that. Uh, do you, would you consider yourself a traditionalist when it comes to wearing a kimono? Or are you very free in your interpretation? Um, I, I prefer um, for myself mm -hmm. wearing a traditional way of kimono. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think it's a, it's a big discussion, isn't it? Is it, you know, is it allowed to put on a kimono a different way? Or is there just one way to wear? Um, in Japan, I see a lot of uh, younger generation wearing kimono wild and creative, which I quite like mm -hmm. because it's uh, daring and which I sometimes miss in the Japanese culture still that they don't talk too much like daring to say something. But once in a while you see a young girl wearing a very crazy combination of kimono and I think like, wow, mm. good. You mm. know, like I'm very happy to see her like breaking through. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you talk to her, she's like, <laughs> don't say anything. But at least it's expression of power and a kind of rebellious yeah. creation. Mm, in Switzerland, I don't know, do you, what do you think yeah. about uh, women or men wearing kimono in Europe, wearing in an individual way, not the proper way? Do you accept it? Uh, not proper way. What does it mean? <laughs> the proper way, <laughs> the, proper way the way I did learn at Kitsuke every day. Um, oh, no. I think because I'm used to see my grandmother, or you go to the shop when I was small, they are not Kitsuke. You see, here was uh, not like because you, you work, mm -hmm. you do mm -hmm. the things, you cannot be like, like dolls. Mm. Um, al alive. Mm. That I explain that, that I regret. Because everybody, it's for the ceremony, for the special occasion. Mm. But if you have to do everything, the kitchen, a yes. little bit to wipe the, no? Mm -hmm. In my studio, I do. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's it's not the right way uh, to wear a kimono of today because it's mm -hmm. become so stylized mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, and become like in the vitrine of the museum but kimono it's depend on how how you work how you move mm -hmm. and of course you have to be careful the gesture mm -hmm. if you take something because so you always you you right. mm, take no, mm -hmm. and or you go down and you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, but today I am very happy that I see the yeah. the Japanese uh, ladies in kimono, and mm -hmm. as uh, it, it's nice as it is, mm -hmm. because it was something to wear. I see. We did have a discussion before we went on, which I would like to pick up, to be honest, because we, mm -hmm. you were a bit surprised about our question. And mm -hmm. I think it is an important one. The question of, can anybody and should anybody wear a kimono? Is it culturally okay for, mm -hmm. let's say, me yes. or anybody to wear a kimono? We often talk about this in terms of cultural appropriation, mm -hmm. uh, picking up somebody else's mm -hmm. culture. I would like to hear both of your thoughts on that. Ah, do, 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 if everybody wears yes, kimono? Yes, exactly, if foreigners. But, but uh, Japanese never uh, wear uh, the skirt and pantalon, but we wear it. Mm. I mean, it's the same thing. Mm. I will never say that it's for another uh, person who'd like to try. Mm, even I think it's interesting. The, 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 to use or the beauty of the clothes, beauty of the drawing, beauty of something, and and they like to put, why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't you think that there's like especially in Japan when I wear a kimono, mm -hmm. Japan is such a sensitive society. Yes, they don't say it, but they watch mm -hmm. and they. <laughs> make remarks in the back. 
Um, and I'm quite scared to wear a kimono mm. um, and go to street because I don't look Japanese anymore. They think, what is this gaijin wearing? And oops, she's so you know, old and why is she wearing this? I just, I just feel like I hear this criticism all the time uh -huh. and I don't feel so comfortable. I love to wear kimono at home. No, <laughs> I love to wear kimono yeah. at home. At yes, home. at no. home. At home. Because it's so uh, you Cozy. become so focused mm, and yeah. so calm, um, and it's it's really kind of a medi meditate meditative mm. thing. It's mm. it's wonderful. But mm. I don't like to go out with kimono because I feel like being observed mm. with a lot of kimono police. <laughs> Isn't it like that? In, Maybe in that you are the beautiful girl and the other. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so we like to see, no? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And talk good things. Yes. Thank you so much. No, I think it was a different. Exactly. Um, yeah. But so you are very free. I mean, you don't say like this is strange how this person no, is wearing it. Because uh, I, uh, if you. For example, I go to Morocco, and I was always in kimono. It's for the um, sacred musical festival, very famous festival there. I participated. But the Moroccan people look at me with some very re respect mm. eyes, as if, oh, you also keep the tradition. Mm. And... Um, in, in Italy, when I pass through the um, Doan, how do you say? Uh, uh, the custom. Custom. Yes, custom. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. custom. And the, the lady asked me, can you turn, please? I'd like to see the image of the, your belt. <laughs> <laughs> and I take the, my passport and I turn, and I didn't show her the passport. <laughs> Oh gosh, when they ask you to take off your belt, you probably, I hope you're not asked to do that. That's a little bit of work. But I think in certain traditional countries, Uzbekistan also, mm. or when I was in India, uh, I saw that one sees me with respectable mm. eyes, mm -hmm. the look. Mm -hmm. um, so I profit. To that. Yeah. You even rode a camel in a in a yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Yes. I would like to touch on this question though. Maybe we have time for Q and A and we still have a little bit of time for chat too. But maybe this is something we can also open up to everybody in the room, the question of appropriateness. Would you also as somebody who's not Japanese or has Japanese roots feel comfortable wearing a kimono? Would it be okay for me to do that. I think there's a lot of confrontation around that subject at the moment and I think it's rightful that we that we touch on that. So mm -hmm. maybe if anybody wants to share their particular view on that later, that'd be great. Um, should we look at what you what you brought? Ah, yes, yes. That was, um, yeah, sorry, you were holding it and ah, then we no. were shifting into this <laughs> no, subject, <it's> okay. sorry. <laughs> I guess you are traveling like this. Yes. It's your wardrobe, mm. isn't it? The closet. It's like it's so practical. That was what I wanted to explain is that uh, yes. the tradition, I'm not a traditionalist, mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the tradition is so clever and so many inspirations and it, has a, it had a meaning why it was folded like that. Mm -hmm. And the heritage of kimono is so easy because it's not a place consuming. Yeah. Um, this is just like one evening dress, isn't yeah. it? When you would travel... Um, I don't open it, uh, mm. but when you would travel with a dress, you would have to make, you know, you have to iron it when you arrive to your place. Uh, you, transportation, you have to have a big bag. But this is just so clever. Mm -hmm. And you can also store it in a tansu, a Japanese closet. And uh, I have a tansu at home, and they are like three generations inside. Incredible. And I never would think about uh, giving it to a broken house because I have space. <laughs> you know, the first yeah. time when you think about getting rid of a piece is because you don't have any space. But that's very true. I, actually, I do mm -hmm. think this is very true, right? Uh, yes, yes, because I, I put uh, uh, several uh, yeah. very easily. Yeah. Yes. But I think that the, the, the question of where, we, even if you want to honor, you'd say, your, your grandmother's codes or... 
for me, it would be endlessly hard to do so. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, it yes. Takes up so much, mm -hmm. so much space. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how do you differentiate? Sorry, just to, to to ask you real quick. How do you differentiate from the outside what is inside? I see this little hole there. It's a yeah. Little um, window. Little peak. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like a, a bit of a not a proper handwriting of my mother, but explaining what is inside. And there's another one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, if you open mm -hmm. a. Tansu, mm. you see just this at the beginning. You see the, so you don't have to open again. Oh, you just see the little yes. bit. Yeah. What what uh, what? It's for winter, uh, mi saison, or summer. Uh huh. It's it's uh, we write, mm -hmm. and I uh, lots has uh, also the um, drawing. Uh, description. Ah, nice. Yeah, so. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And how is it constructed just from a technical standpoint? Somebody actually never worn one. How many layers are there? How, you know, how much, how much of putting on is there? And how long does it take you to put one on in you, Kazu? I think there's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you even don't need use any mirror. I guess you're not using a mirror. When I'm very, very in a hurry, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like, uh, like today, if there is some um, image, mm -hmm. that should be a center. Oh, okay. Today it was very hard because from Paris to Geneva and Geneva to Zurich, I was six, uh, six hours uh, yeah. in the train. Long travel. And... Um, but you, uh, as I wear uh, so often for years and years, one can, one can feel a little bit at the back. Uh, yeah. You see? The, you, you know it by heart, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's impressive. I mean, I would not. <laughs> can, you, can you do this on your own? No, on the OB part I need help. Mm -hmm. But I love to ask for help. Yeah. It's nice to be dressed, you know, as I said, to be two of... I have a teacher here. <laughs> yes, it's a very personal good thing, just mm -hmm. being two of us and trying out. And mm. that's, that's really beautiful. And would you, would you wear the different components? Of course, right? You mix and match in a way, right? You would wear the obi in a different, with a different kimono. Yes, yes, you, you yes, yes. 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 It's Absolutely. a very creative part, you know, it's just like, it's a cloth. It's like this. Yes, and then and each person has a little trick. I see, like, wow, she's combining this little color inside. Yes, yes I see. exactly. I saw yes. your under kimono. Yeah, mm. very um, mm. slightly, and it's it's a very mm. delicate way of invisible, invisible, stylish. Before we open up to Q and A, because as I was warned by Nico, there's one rule at Asia Society that is we start on time, we finish on time. <laughs> <laughs> so I will obey. But I want to ask you guys before we before we open it up to. To, to audience questions and a discussion, maybe. Um, is there something that people get wrong about kimonos or some kind of prejudice or something that you would like to kind of have cleaned up? I can start. I mean, for, for me, it's... I think, to be honest, I don't like it when, when someone just talks about geisha when mm -hmm. it comes to kimono. Mm -hmm. Geisha was a very, very little, little, little minority of Japanese women wearing kimono. And there were hardworking professionals, and actually also a kind of a sad story. Mm, mm, they, mm. They, did, they did belong to a, to a mm, house, mm. and they had no right. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yeah. uh, Geisha is a professional. Yeah. In, uh, mm, it's a very special, uh, how can I say? Yes, there's a sort of confusion. Um, that sort of geisha is image of the beautiful girl. Yeah. No? Which is true. Uh, they are mm, uh, learned the poem and the music and songs, dance, um, but it's really um, one of the most ancient profession yeah. of the world, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yes. sorry, did you want to say something? But, uh, did you, did you, it looked ah, a little yes, bit yes, like yes. you wanted to, to no, say something. No, because I wanted to say in another way, uh, nothing to do with kimono, but they use the word kamikaze for mm -hmm. the terrorist. 
And mm. I was always shocked. Uh, kamikaze uh, in Japan, it's the fight against the somebody who has an um, arm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Who's, um, who's armed, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see, a, a terrorist who, who killed a lot of city, citizens, yeah. the men and the girl and the children. Yeah. No, that yeah. is not mm -hmm. kamikaze at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Kamikaze is a divine wind mm -hmm. uh, and should have a sort of spirit in different way. Mm -hmm. mm. Important point. Thanks for mm -hmm. raising that. Yeah. I think we're making a, a, a punctual landing onto the Q&A.